three, two, one. Hi, I'm Chief Meteorologist Carla Redondo giving you an update on what's going on in the tropics with the 4 o'clock advisory on each one of our systems. As we first take a look at the satellite and radar, you can definitely see uh, that some of the outer bands have already reached parts of South Florida as the eye continues to move just north of the uh, uh, island of Cuba. So it's continuing to move towards the west now, and we're going to continue to watch that. The uh, motion is west right now at 12 miles per hour, and so that might mean it might take that turn a little farther to the west. So we're still expecting that turn to take place. Winds are at 155, so it's almost back to a Category 5 hurricane. It is a 4 still, and you can see the pressure at 925 millibars. All right, let's check on the track now. Skirting the coast there of uh, Cuba as a Category 4 storm, but right now the Hurricane Center does have it increasing back to a Category 5 hurricane possibly with winds near 160 miles per hour as it approaches the Florida Keys. So it does look like it's going to be a very powerful hurricane, whether it's 160, 150, 165. Either way, remember those intensity forecasts could be off, but either way, this is going to be a very powerful hurricane as it moves towards areas of uh, Florida. And then it's going to continue to move towards the Fort Myers area or in that cone of error. Again, this track can shift a little bit to the east, or west. We've told you for days that the eastern Gulf of Mexico along the uh, Florida coast, Florida, or the east coast of Florida is the target zone that we're seeing this storm go through. Now remember, don't just focus on that center line. The whole state of Florida will be impacted there across uh, the peninsula with the uh, storm because it is a wide storm and the wind field does extend out many, many miles from the center. So as it approaches uh, Fort Myers, Tampa, you can see by Monday afternoon weakening to a tropical storm. But with this path, the uh, dangerous part of the eye wall on the right side of it will stay over central Florida, unfortunately through Orlando and through many areas of central Florida up towards the north. Tallahassee looks like it might be coming right over Tallahassee as a weak hurricane or a strong tropical storm. And then by Tuesday, uh, across parts of the border of Tennessee, Alabama, and uh, uh, Georgia as a uh, depression, but lots of rain will continue to fall and a big storm surge coming over 12 feet or so along south Florida. Rainfall could be anywhere from 5 to 15, 20 inches in Florida. We may see up to 10, 15 inches in parts of Georgia, Alabama, depending on how much rain falls with this system. Then it continues to weaken to a non-tropical low over parts of Tennessee. So lots and lots of uh, territory in Florida will be impacted by this system. Also out there, this is Hurricane Katia getting a little bit stronger as it nears the coast of Mexico. And also we have Hurricane Jose, a very powerful hurricane there that is approaching those islands that got hammered by Irma. So right now, winds of 150 miles per hour, a very strong Category 4 hurricane. And it could, again, scrape those islands there that got hit, the British and U.S. Virgin Islands, and then pulling away from Puerto Rico. Uh, not as close as Irma was, and then heading out into the open Atlantic Ocean, but a very powerful hurricane, unfortunately a one-two punch for areas of uh, the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. So unfortunately, they are going to have to prepare for another system. Now, Katia got up to 105 miles per hour. It's very near the coast and will continue to move inland over Mexico as we head through the next 24 hours and then weaken quickly. But we are looking at possibly a lot of rain and mudslides into parts of Mexico. And coming up in my pinpoint forecast at 5 o'clock, I'll have the latest with the steering currents and more of the computer models. And we'll take a look at other activities going on as Florida prepares for this powerful hurricane.